Hi, I'm Garth Ennis, and uh, you need to be listening to Drinking With Comics. Hello, and welcome to Drinking With Comics. I'm Sean, this is Chris. Hello. That's Mike, Jordan's on the end, and from the Philippines, Karen, say your last name for me. Karen Kunovic. Kunovic. Yeah. Thank you, Drinking With Comics. So, okay, you, you can go home now. No, I'm just yes, kidding. Bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, just take everything and go. So, also, Kirsten is working the cameras as always, and we have a live studio audience. So, thank you, everybody, for thank showing up. Thank you, everybody. Ooh. And, um, real quick, so we have some complimentary beer. There's a cooler right over there. Uh, it is Garage uh, Brewery's Apple Pie. Brewing Company. Garage Brewing Company's Apple Pie Pale Ale, right. courtesy of Steve Free. Simon, who's been on the show before way, way back on our second episode. But, uh, yeah, it was weird. Was like, he on our second episode? He was. Ever? Yeah. Go wow. back. It's, How long have we been doing this? A long time. Okay. So what, so did you, you came to California to go to San Diego? Was that the, the Comic-Con was the main? Uh, um, my first Comic-Con was in 2010. Mm -hmm. And then, um... I am hopefully going to make my 10th Comic-Con. So you've come every year for 10 years? Wow. It's my 9th. This will be my, my ninth, And then um, I think in 2011, they had a really nice panel, the Philippine Invasion. Oh. And you, am I allowed to like yeah, show yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. This right. is is. yeah. Is um, Use Mike as a, you know, you're allowed to do anything you want. Oh. Yeah, it, it, yes. Well, <laughs> um... So I just want to say hello, Philippines. If there's anybody from the Philippines watching, hello, Bacolod City, hello. Pasig City, Metro Manila, and We'll see you at the end whatever. of the month. Yes, APCC, Mike and Rafael will, will be there. But um, in 2011, they had a panel called The Philippine Invasion. And this guy, Jerry Alangilan, who is a, a good friend of mine, was part of that panel along with um, so many others, like um, yeah. Alex Nino, um, Tony De Zuniga. Will Sportasho was not part of that panel, but I felt he should have been, but that's not my job to be on programming, but Will's will be at APCC. And um, Jerry also drew this Captain America. He inked this one. He, yeah, sorry, he inked it, yes. He's, he's an <laughs> inker, and he's been inking. He inked over your neighbor, though. Yes, Hank, uh, Lionel, Francis, you also, they're both based in the Philippines. And these guys have been working for U.S. companies since the 90s, mm -hmm. and they would send their work via FedEx, but now with all the internet and right. everything, they're able to wow. um, uh, work from the home country and... Digitally. And, just, that's and crazy send, to me, though. That they, I never thought of this they, before. They uh, used to have to FedEx it? They would have... So they would be <laughs> given a deadline, and they would always have to, like... Finished Time before it, the deadline. Yeah, in order so to that get the it. FedEx wow. would be able to to get it there. But I think Jerry would be better equipped um, to tell the story. I will tag him under this podcast. Hi, Jerry. Comment. Yes. <laughs> yes, and um, congratulations, Jerry and, and Lionel. Yes. On, on this, they had a big launch, and um, yeah, exciting. So, so they launched. Now is that um, not a big launch, but a, a bi they had a, an event. Is that the Back newest home. iteration of Captain America? <clears throat> yes, because written I'm by so Ta Nehisi Coates. Say so that, say that Ta Nehisi Coates. Ta Nehisi okay. Ta Nehisi Coates. Did I say, okay. I say it wrong? I, I don't know. Which I love, though, like that it's being written by Ta Nehisi Coates and it's being drawn and inked by two people from the Philippines. It's got to be driving Trumpers crazy <laughs> that this is the people who are in, taking care of the Captain America, right. you know? Which, good on them. Um, <laughs> I want to comment, yeah. like, so I met Karen two years ago at San Diego Comic Con, and and she picked up Guns a Blazin' and kind of went on her way, and uh, we became Facebook friends because like you know as you do like when you meet somebody oh that's cool and then I became friends with Rafael yeah 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 and then Jordan yeah and, and then and then we watched the three hour version of Drinking oh, with Comics yeah so and, and like so she and it was so interesting and kind of funny that. and like odd in a train and, and, and way. I, I refused to edit it so you know I didn't watch it <laughs> <laughs> that episode is lost I got my shit for him alright I'm gonna read this <laughs> yeah. I don't remember it being that I was, I was really embarrassed by that. Um, but anyway, so, but we've been, we, we're kind of like pen pals. We talk all okay. the time. And and at one point, probably about a year, year and a half after knowing you and just thinking you're like this cool person and fun person to talk to, I Googled her. 
And so you began Google stalking her. I, I, well, yeah, Does I Googled it usually it take you a year and a half to go? No, I'm, it, not, I'm sorry. Well, I haven't Googled you yet, but I'm afraid uh, just because I fear what I'll see. Wow. Uh, but no, so she's she's a comic book writer. She's an edit. She edited Peach Mango. It just mango. Peach Mango Pie is the Jolly Bee Pie, and Jolly Bee is a famous fast food chain. Anthony Bourdain, the late Anthony Bourdain, ate there and ate the chicken joy and their spaghetti and yes peach mango pie is one of their pies but i wrote for mango comics okay not peach mango way comics. to bring it around to anthony <laughs> uh, but so she edited the first uh, all-female uh yeah, anthology had, um, and it ran it was a monthly book right we tried to do it monthly but we were all not working together in the same office our publishers just wanted a pair of female writer female artist and a whole female editorial board mm -hmm. toward the end it was very difficult to sustain because we didn't have the same office and like people would leave and get other jobs so we had um guys and girls working to put the comic out together it was called mango jam and it had like four main stories and i did editorial work on it so i'm very proud of it um it's not being it lasted published a year or so right no we did several years we did about maybe 16 17 issues and she had a character so, in there which one of my yeah. projects once guns of blazing wraps up that i'm hoping to do i know i'm putting you on this yeah spot. no pressure no pressure hashtag no, hashtag no pressure no but she she created a, a character <laughs> in, a, in a series called kali yes and t pitch kali real oh, quick well um yeah it's there have been several comic books and films using philippine martial arts um but mine was just um the lead character, of course, as demanded by the publisher, all, all your heroes had to be girls. And they didn't have to have the bikini. Right, right. And <laughs> right. They could be oh. anything. So mine was this um, a girl who did Philippine martial arts and the wood that um, her sticks came from came from a very special tree. And she lived with her dead grandmother, who was a ghost. So um, I actually... Just oh, can I show? To? There's not not from Cali, but um, another friend of mine, Jay Ignacio, is working on a comic with Alex Nino, who who I also um, I don't know. Here, here's a page. He put it on Facebook, and it's also using Philippine martial arts with the sticks. Can you can so, you send it not now, but can you send it to me, and I can edit sure. it into the okay. Sure. So Alex so, Nino drew that. Yes, oh, and cool. it's something new with, with, I mean, I can share it because he shared it on Facebook. Right, it's right. not like something top secret that, right. like, uh, can't show it. So, yeah, it's it's just a little scarier now because uh, 15 years ago, you would just read it and kind of enjoy the story. Now mm -hmm. people are very, uh, are like, are, is, she, are, is she holding the stick correctly? Is she doing the martial oh. arts correctly? Hmm. Is she doing, you know, and then this whole thing with the cultural appropriation and, and everything. And mm -hmm. and they actually, um, I don't know if Raphael and Mike will see it, but um, there is a soap opera now on one of the big stations in the Philippines. And it's it's called Victor Magtatanggol. It's like, it's Victor Defender. Mm. And it's this Filipino guy or a mestizo Filipino, meaning he's Filipino, <coughs> but he's got he's a little he's got mixed blood, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's dressed up like Thor, but he has black hair and a hammer, so he's kind of like controversial. I think if you're going to start <laughs> using <laughs> um, things like martial arts or certain culture, I think people now demand that you <coughs> really know your stuff. Yeah. Audiences are more sophisticated, so you do have to take those things into consideration. However, I mean, I, I also think everybody's a little bit like, I think identity politics is a little bit out of control. Uh, way, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. way I out mean, of control. Sometimes and I, I think we need to, like, people need right. to back the fuck off. Like, you know, yeah. like, if you if you live in the Philippines and you want to tell a story and it involves somebody looking like Thor or, like, incorporating some, some Norse mythology, know. like... <laughs> I, I don't think that's a reason to boycott anything. I, I know that's not, we're yeah. not really saying that's what's happening, but you were saying that there's kind of like a backlash. A, yeah, a, like, a, mix, it a, mixed re, a, a mixed reaction to it. And um, since it's it's so rich in, in mythology and there's just so much to dig up. And uh, when Neil Gaiman visited the Philippines, he wanted to... You know, absorb get, the get, probably get it, absorb. You know, the, well, he's in very and, good at that. And he's very good at yes. gobbling up mythology. So is so is so, um, um, uh, 
the Hellboy creator. Help me. Mike, Mike, Mike Mignola. Yeah, Mignola. he's very good at it yeah, as yeah. well, where he kind of like takes all these different mythologies and works them into this over kind of arching tapestry. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the, the other thing, too, though, is I don't know anything about the, the um, folklore of the Philippines, and I'm sure there's some really awesome stuff that should be. So then, like, <laughs> if they want to do something that's kind of appropriating Norse mythology... They should be able to, but at the same time, why wouldn't you want to dig into that culture's uh, mythology? Yeah, because that's what that's what I mean. That there's so much, and we do have um, a wealth of creators, and we have independent comic book conventions several times in a year. There's a a scene, and it gets supported, and they're really good. Um, lots of really good artists and creators. I wish I could like buy them all, mm-hmm. but. At the time that I was really active and really excited about everything, that was like 20 years ago. And all these guys that I met and worked with and talked to, they're all, well, like Jerry, they're all, you know, publishing books, getting awards, getting international. Well, I mean, good. So there's a lot of growth there. Yeah, so that's there's very so. Good. I know. I mean, I don't know if they'll be able to see the, the indie scene, but it's. Uh, uh, we will. That's why we're going. It's one reason we're going. It's happening. Yeah. It's it's happening. So there's a wealth of um, a wealth of content. So I think one of the one of the many arguments is that there's this um, so much content, so many creators, but you still have to um, I borrow because I guess it's familiar. You, it's expected to to get the ratings and. There's a lot of room for other cultures <laughs> and other ideas because you know you see things like. Before, hmm. when was um, the Krampus movie, the big Krampus movie, uh, the guy that did Trick or Treat? Mike Dotry. So his movie, before that, <laughs> I had oh never God. even heard of Krampus before. And now there's, it's everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, and so I was ignorant to it. It's not like it, it didn't exist, but mm-hmm. it just wasn't in the mainstream. It's very much in the mainstream right now, yeah. right? Yeah. So, it's, you know, there's so much rush for content. And there's, the other thing is there's, a lot of these ideas are archetypal. So Thor is an archetypal idea that, you know, goes back hundreds and hundreds uh, yeah. of years, and of the same archetype of, yeah. occurs in all these different places mm-hmm. and cultures because it's an archetype. So, I mean, at some point, it's like if somebody's going to complain that somebody in the Philippines is appropriating Norse <laughs> mythology, it's like. Well, my complaint was the hammer looked a little flat and tiny. That's, that's, what, that's she what she said. She Come said. on, everyone. Oh, you my God. saw the artwork, and I said, how come the other one, the power oh, is, it's, God, it's that like that, that, you know, and it's Because that's Hemsworth. And you know, <laughs> and then and then I'm trying to look at his art. Yeah, he has a big flowing cape, but that's kind of like very not so. He's got a little tack hammer. Yeah. <laughs> but that's <laughs> not an intellect's opinion. So I mean, not, there, there are like, yeah, what they, which like does sort not of, belong on this table, but I mean, no, what do you mean? Everything it doesn't belongs, belongs this exactly table. on this table. <laughs> that was my so, but it's not like you wouldn't. So put your big it, you criticism was it, the size of his you hammer. You wouldn't put it on a on an <laughs> English term paper. So like, we've been like Facebook friends, so we kind of like send bacon back and forth across the world. Wait, wait, back up, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> no, like maple There's bacon. There's new tremors and coming out. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Wait, wait. New tremors? There's yes. new tremors I think coming also out. With, 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 wait. with Mr. Bacon, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, he's back. Bacon's yes. back? Oh, yeah. That should be the tagline. Bacon is back. You send bacon back and forth? Yes, we have a How machine. Does, you have a machine? That's, I don't understand. Is this like... <laughs> Through sending this bacon across the multiverse to, to reach the Philippines in time for the, uh, the packing party for the Christmas thing. Yeah. I, I discovered this community of like cosplayers and fandom, and then just upon further exploration, like it's fervent over there. Yeah, it's like, it's it's crazy. In fact, um, a bunch of <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah, I mean they fight. I mean it's so huge. People fight, and it's almost like religion. My well, but God. this is religion. To a lot of people, it <laughs> okay, is. There, to a lot of people, it is. Like, those are stories. And and right. it, it, there's all, it's a fandom in a way the difference you know that no the Catholicism is right no for, I mean right it's it's and 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 it's what it's like what are you doing to my star my what are you doing to my star my Star Wars yeah. see you that's know, what, like it's it's all right like their own religion already yeah, takes a backseat because see, that's what means my star, maybe that would help Marvel. maybe if maybe if <laughs> Star Wars took a page out of Christianity just started little splinter Star Wars. 
Don't say everywhere. That, yeah, like the Old right. Testament and the right. New Testament. Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then born again Star Wars. <laughs> not born again Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 I want to see the more. I'm a born Star again Wars Jedi. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like a nine Which is yeah. like, and the old Jedi Three will toilets. go like, what's with this new born again? I, I wanted to bring up. I want to segue. We were talking about how these, you know, conventions just kind of sprang they up. They just right? sprang up. I think somebody found a market, and you've got, um, like, around now they're having something called the Warner TV Expo which is all the like the Warner okay. Euros and they have one day event for that is and Warner have, Brothers legitimately involved in it or yeah they, Warner okay, TV is a big part of it then you have AP and then several times a year you have cosplay conventions so and, and it brings a great many people in right and so it, there's it this, does, you're gonna see so. where I'm going with this in a okay, minute I'm watching. so so and so San Diego like this is a huge thing you know like they say There's with retail hundreds of year round thousands year of round retail a lot of establishments count on Black Friday in order to go into the black that's why it's called Black Friday right lose money lose money boom so I I'm, I don't frequent San Diego I've been there a couple times it's been years but you have all these people that come in and like you said earlier Mike they pay all they bring money to spend like yeah. people oh, yeah. they Save go up. to Comic Con they pay for it's parking a, they a, go to restaurants they go out drinking it's a big economic boom the hotel for them, it's for huge sure. right and so now there's one bar Mike told me about earlier that what's the name of this what's the name of this bar smoking gun the smoking SD. cunts is that the name of it the <laughs> smoking <laughs> gun a smoking cunts. smoking cunts it's smoking a bar gun. in San Diego and so their thing now they're doing this geek they canceled it well, but let's, they start, did. let's skewer yeah. them anyway. Yeah, let's though, do it. You know. yeah, I love so skewering. Geek, Geeks Be Gone, Real was that it? Geeks, huh? Geeks, Be, Geeks Gone? Be Gone? What was it called? It was called like, The Smoking Guns. No, 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 no. no, no, no. They, they had a flyer for this event. It was oh, Geeks the, Be Gone, yeah. Geeks yeah. Be Gone. Yeah. And, it, and it was basically them saying, like, you know, every year all these geeks come in and, and, and ruin our city, so we're going to take it back. They're not allowed yeah. at our little party. And it's like, like, no, no cosplayers, I mean, no geeks. So First of all, like, so are you not allowed to go out any other weekend? And like I don't understand, they have the whole place year round. I mean, and secondly, it's like, how, like you said, like people come in with money to spend. Yeah, turning down money. And the other thing is like, geek culture is world culture now. Yeah. Oh, I mean, almost to a fault, and in, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. But like these things, it's not like there's a niche where it's like I hate those people that go see Marvel movies because guess what? Everybody goes see, to see. Yeah, them. they're the number yeah. one movies the last several yeah. years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. I just find it so weird that this establishment would basically shoot themselves in the foot. It's like whose idea was this? Like some guy that was that, like that's what the, the captain of the football of team in high school and just <laughs> hates anybody that reads comics. And it's like, buddy, you probably watch a TV show that's based on a fucking comic book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you know, th th you, you know what? The owner's wife probably left him for a cosplay. There you go. That's there what you it go. was. There you go. He got fucking fucking uh, cuckolded by Deadpool. <laughs> I don't know, it's just really, really, really weird because it's one of the things about these conventions are they bring all, they bring people together, but they also bring revenue. So yeah, I mean, I, money's over everything, but yeah. I yeah, thought money's was, money's money. So, I, mean, I don't know, hashtag smoking gun twat. SD. Go fuck yourself, I don't know, whatever. Uh, I mean, really, there's plenty of other bars that will welcome these well, I mean, that's the thing. That's so a lot, a lot yeah. of my friends commented on that and said, oh, we should go there and drink water. We should go there and split a bowl of potato <laughs> chips or whatever. And it was like, I don't want to be there. Like, yeah, why would there you there's so much want magic. To do that. I wouldn't even and, want to do like, that. And, and since I've been going to Comic Con, which I started, my first one was in 1998, and like I went out, like you go to the show and you get all the books you want, and you get all you know, and that's fun. Then you go out into the city, and the entire city, like you can, when when else in your life, except for that week, can you look and say, oh, so what shows do you watch, or you know, like, and you can instantly make a connection with almost anybody in the room, and and. Uh, like, the world would be such a better place if everybody was just a fan of something. You know what I mean? Talk about Elmer. <laughs> Elmer is Jerry's book. It is a window into an alternate Earth where chickens have suddenly acquired the intelligence and consciousness of humans. Stop. Where... I'm sold. I'm ordering this tonight. I don't even want to know anymore. Does anybody <laughs> even need to hear anything let's, else? Let's hear the rest. Book? Let's hear the rest. Chickens? Where they consider themselves a race no different from whites, browns, or blacks, recognizing themselves to be sentient, the inexplicably evolved chickens push to attain rights for themselves as the newest members of the human race. Elmer tells the story of a family of chickens who lives and struggles to survive in a suddenly complicated, dangerous, yet beautiful world. And this has won a prize in France. Three 
The pre, I say. Prima nocta. Dang. Wait, you're deferring to him for pronunciation? Yes. Oh, no, I, I got this. Fuck this week. <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> it, it won the pre, I say, de la critique, and it was nominated for the Eisner, which is like the creme mm-hmm. de la creme mm-hmm. of the American awards, of French awards. Creme de, yeah, notice I used a French yeah, I, term. Yeah, I, I, I did catch I'm that. I'm so sorry. I had to read the back of No, it's Jerry. great. Oh, I'm going to do for the, Like, yes. He might watch this, but. No, and she sent, and it, it's personalized. Look, he sent me the. Hey, Mike Wellman. Thanks, man. Dude, he, he drew a big cock. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adequate cock. If anybody let's can just, see let's this. just say it's adequate. It's, a, it's an adequate. <laughs> dude, that is an adequate cock. I, we should show it. Oh, oh, you want to show it? No, no, it? you don't Wait, want to see this. No, the one in the book or the, or the other one? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> take, a picture, take a picture of it with your phone and send it to me. That's not going to come out. Oh, did I tell you about You want a dick pic? <laughs> You know, after 42 episodes, you'd think I'd fucking learn the trigger words with him, right? <laughs> Ever tell you about the, the time Nathan Fillion saw my penis? No. You told me. But somebody <laughs> just left. At oh, uh, no. Con Man, yeah? Yeah, it was on Con Man. Yeah. So, this is back in my tendering days. And Which I, I don't send these though. unsolicited, right? But huh. I'm in the morning before I go to set. And I met a new tender, and she's like, oh, show me your dick. Set of Con Man Season 2, by the way. So Se- season 2, yeah. So, like... The last thing I do before I go to set is I'm, you know, in the morning's like the best time. Like, it's like you the do. rising, like also you do, the rising you know? sun. You see, and I go to shoes, set. Shoes tied. I got my my wallet. My you know, keys I don't take any, dick, they're dick, not allowed okay, to take um, pictures on set. Cell phone. Okay, cool. It wasn't Nathan Fillion who saw it, but I was in a picture with Nathan Fillion and Alan Tudyk, and the producer uh, uh, um, was it, your friends with PJ Sharma. Uh, uh, Harmasaw. Harmasaw. So so like, I'm there. Alan, I'm, do you still like me a little bit? All right, anyway, um, so I'm there, and I have a photo op with Nathan Fillion and Alan Tudyk, mm-hmm. and I'm like, dude, uh, PJ, will you take my picture? And so I give him my phone, and he's like, takes the picture, so let me just show you. I, you won't no, see dick no, pic. no, you're no, not, you're not just going to show but, me. Oh my. So basically, when you take a picture, the last picture you took is over here in a little tiny box. So, so he, he saw takes your my little picture. tiny dick in the corner. I mean, it was big, but it was it was small. It was, <laughs> it was small at the time. And I, I didn't even think cold. about it, but like, so he takes the picture, winter. and I shake his hand. I'm like, "Thanks, dude." And he's like, and he just gives me the phone like this. I'm dude, like, oh, that was weird. Wipe he was his so hand nice. His jeans. So then I look. I'm like, "Oh shit, that's right." <laughs> so anyway, that was that did, was three years ago. Did you know? Did you know? I don't. Did you ever watch the show Castle? No. There's an episode of Castle. Nathan Fillion's Where uh, somebody program. hands hit Castle the phone, and there's this whole thing that comes out because the guy's dick was on the phone. And dude, on he, Castle? They he us? totally wrote that about you. <laughs> I think... I oh, man, think... I think there's... I think Nathan Fillion might owe you some royalties, my friend. <laughs> I think he owes me, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit a PJ about that. Wow. Anyway. So... Sorry. Um... I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, th- I'm gonna totally go 180. Thank yes. you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. 360. Um, God first, you. Yeah, let's talk about some. Let's talk about some. Uh... I, I just, I want to say, so uh, David Lucarelli, he was on last time. Um, Tinseltown's going. The second issue was great, really great. But uh, uh, Kirsten and I went to see Doctor Zamba's Ghost Show of Terror. You did, and it was fucking awesome. And I know, like you, you were busy, and like so we, we were gonna do, yeah. we were gonna do a bus thing. It didn't happen. No. It's coming back in October. No, oh, cool. No, That's no, even no, better. no, no. Real, real quick for the people who didn't watch last episode or who haven't seen it, uh, can you give a give a little summary of what exactly it is? So David was saying. So apparently, there used to be these things called ghost shows in like the fifties in Hollywood, where it would be like seances and like different. You orchestrate kind of these different um, scenarios and I- interactive, you know, with the audience, and then it would usually culminate with this like blackout segment and where there were supposed to be ghosts present or whatever. And mm-hmm. he had found a book outlining this. I forget what the book was or who the author was, and and he's like, you know, I I would like to see that. That's a shame that, that nobody does that anymore. It's, a, it's kind of a, nobody's even really heard of it. And he's like, well, I, I guess maybe if I want to see it bad enough, I'll just do it. So he put this on and he did it as part of Fringe Fest and. Uh, it was really good. They sold out four or five nights, and so it's coming back in October, and it's well worth your time. The, I mean, it's 45 minutes long. It, I was literally like, <clears throat> dude, did we get the 10-minute version? Like, what's going on? It went by super fast. I was very engaged, very interactive, and just funny as hell. It was really good. That's basically basically like a live action. As you said, back in the 50s, they would do these things, 
And I think a lot of that comes from the old um, William Castle films from the 50s. Oh, and they put the tinglers in the seats and the stuff? tinglers yes. in the seats yes. with the, uh, the smell-o-vision. Um, let's go down the line. Like, who wants to talk about what? Uh, Chris? Let's see. Um... Well, you know, let's touch on this one right here. It's, it's right on top. So, be nice. So, my, so Mike, Mike Uh-oh. just Mike just tossed was kind enough to toss this into our uh, into our poll uh, just yesterday. We read it today. It's the new uh, Robert Kirkman, uh, you know, from The Walking Dead. And Chris fucking Burnham too. Yeah. And it was a surprise release, by the way. They, we did yeah. not order this book. Well, so it didn't get announced. It just no. They came just out. they just they actually Oblivion matched Oblivion our orders with Oblivion song and sent us fifty copies because that's what so we ordered. It's called it's called Die Die Die, and oh, I should also also mention that it's uh, it's co-written. I want to say it's co-written because inside it just says co- uh, well, credited he, as co-pilot. He, he says it's an idea that him, Scott Gimple, and Chris Burnham came Scott up with. Scott Gimple. Mm-hmm. Um, now I know this is a point of contention. Mm-hmm. Yes. Big point. Scott Gimple is the dumb fuck who ruined the Walking Dead TV series. I I would counter that the Walking Dead TV series has been shite from almost the beginning, from about the f- seventh episode of the first season. So, I mean, after uh, okay. there were only six in the first season. Whatever. I will, so so there after you go. after Frank Darabont. But yeah, Frank, the, the Frank seventh. Darabont, is- Frank Darabont Absolutely. is a national treasure, and the first yeah, season I, of The Walking Dead is one of the best nah, seasons. The, I thought the last two episodes blew, and that was where I lost my... That's where it got interesting, so nah. that's where it diverted. I didn't like the one Kirkman wrote where, with the gangs. I, I loved was, I thought that was amazing. Oh, I thought man. that was the best that that show ever was. Which gang? The one where there was they're like in the gangs episode. Yeah, where they, I mean... And yeah. I think it was episode there five, many season gangs. one. I, I thought that was fantastic. The, the one in the first season in the old, where they, they find all the gangs who stole their shit, oh, they got to get okay, it back, okay, it turns out they were the orderlies in the old folks' home. Oh, okay, yes. And then, yeah, the... They, they needed they needed and, and a yeah, good way exactly. to deviate they, from the comic book exactly, too, right? exactly. <laughs> basically the last couple seasons of The Walking Dead have devolved into this we're going to war with somebody soon and it's like fucking five episodes of people standing around saying I'm going to get them and then finally it would culminate 12 at, episodes later they're still yeah, doing and, 18 and, episodes, exactly and then, and then like they'd finally meet they'd shoot a bunch of bullets everyone would fucking miss for whatever reason and then they'd say I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time, Gadget. Next time. <laughs> this, I thought, so it's fantastic. And let me just, oh, I'm going mm, I'm to okay, read, okay. I'm going to read something. Ooh, we're going to First point, of all, if you, it, here. Mike gave, gave me this book. and, and well, I sold I, it to you. June's watching. Yes. <laughs> I paid for it. Oh, no, he's not. You he's did, not. actually. Um, <laughs> so if you had given me like a blind taste test of this book where I didn't, didn't know, know who it was, I would yeah. know it was Chris Burnham because I'm a huge fan. But also... I would never have guessed that it was Kirkman. It feels very British to me. Mm-hmm. And there's this, like, it, it's not just, there's something about the the um, meter of the story. There's a sequence. The tambour, th- there's if you a, will. There's a sequence of. Jeffrey. It, it, Jeffrey. There's a sequence <laughs> in here where it reminds me, in Shaun of the Dead, there's a whole sequence where it's like Shaun's mapping out what they're going to do and everything revolves to them coming back to the Winchester and cling, you know. Yeah. Okay. Take Pete's car, go around Mum's, go in, deal with Philip. Sorry, Philip. Grab Mum, go to Liz's, pick her up, bring her back here, have a cup of tea, and wait for all this to blow over. Perfect. There's a sequence in here like that. They go over possible scenarios. Where they're like, well, we're going to kill this person. So the premise of the book is basically like, we don't like to admit it, but this is an evil world where evil people do evil shit all the time. Thankfully, there's a secret cabal within the United States government that works outside our normal system to influence world matters. Through targeted assassination, the world around us is manipulated right under our noses, mostly for the better, sometimes for individual gain. So if you're hurting people, somehow making the world worse than it already is, or even just standing in the way of something good happening, someone could be, right now, someone right now could be giving the order for you to die, die, die. For me... I think this is just a fucking piece of garbage. Really? <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. I, mean, I, I, I really here's, love it. Okay, here's why. It feels like it's Robert Kirkman and Scott Gimple trying to basically pull like an Ennis or a fucking Mark Millar. It feels like Warren Ellis to me. More, but really? M- the Millar I could tell. I mean, it, I was going to say, it feels very like Ennis to me in a sense of like of like Jimmy's Bastards where they're just, they're just trying to go over the top to go over the top. I don't think it's that over the top, though. 
It's it. There's a lot of shit in this that reminds I mean, me I of know, Jimmy's like Bastards. A, I know a nose. There's gets a lot. Cut of, off, there's a lot of stuff in here that reminds me of Ooh. um of the boys. You know, just the just the just the whole, whole well, we'll organization. See. We'll see. I mean, that's a, that's a, it's a valid criticism. I I don't see it. I'm, I'm but also I think I read it before. He, he was like, oh Scott Gimple, blah blah blah, and I'm like, I don't know who the fuck Scott Gimple is. I don't care. Oh, no, I, no, I, no, I, well, no. the other night I was like, oh, so we can talk about some comics. Maybe you read this. And literally, I was I like, saw Scott and then she's name. like, she's like, I'm so I am sorry. not interested. I'm so sorry, Mr. <laughs> Gimple. I'm. Well, so he's watching. You know he watches our show regularly, I'm right? I'm so sorry. I, 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 would, I would say this, Karen, He has feelings, too, you know. know. If you get a chance, read it and then, like, post something. Aren't you I, intrigued now to check it out? Yes. Uh, well, I, since I, there's I two great. different um, opinions on it, although maybe the cover, if it was something different, because it, it looks like another walking is the cover. I don't think it does at all. It reminds me. Yeah, well, it's like there's blood. blood. Chris Burnham. <laughs> like, so Chris Burnham did... Um, he did Batman Inc. and and um, some of the Batman around with Grant Morrison, which uh, to me is like I don't read Batman on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. That stuff is gold. But he did Nameless with Grant Morrison, which is one of the best okay. series. In I mean, it blew my mind. And his art is so bloody and just horrific yeah. in this really. You know, I mean, but you know, it, it just makes me. Way. It just makes me think it's like another Walking Dead. It's type. not. Uh, well, actually, actually, <laughs> real fast, I want to segue into something. Just now, you're talking about um, you know Batman Inc. and those kind of things. Well, we finally um, got Sean to read. Oh, Long Halloween! Batman, um, Long Halloween. I, I thought it was great. Clear that it was before he you know went all taking care of business. I mean, great, great art, great story. And it's you a know, detective it's a, it's a story. Cross, that was that's the best it's, part. It's exactly that's my favorite thing me. about it is that you know it's it's Batman being a fucking detective. Yeah. You know, he's not just running around fucking punching people and yeah. you know getting all broody and left at the altar. <laughs> You know, it's. Oh, well, by it's, the way, I just want to say he left her too. Wait, we're, we're gonna oh, have to I'm talk sure about that. He I, did. I no, they, that, there was like it, he he does it has no idea that he was left. So he, wait, we're, 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 that is rubbish, dude. He's straight standing there. He's like, oh, well, it's been about an hour. Time to fucking go wait, home. Wait, okay, now so we're gonna say we're gonna segue now. So long Halloween, <laughs> thumbs up. So <laughs> so for anybody that doesn't know, Batman uh, Fifty came out, which is almost impossible to me that Batman Fifty. It's been going for like fifty years. So they do one. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 off of the last, I'm, I'm off just, of the what, not not re, rebirth. Is that what rebirth, it was? Yeah. yeah. Which was they did put out what two a month? Of two that? a month, yeah, yeah. bi weekly. Yeah. So he the, the big Cash thing grab. that DC they built was up like, a oh my god, you're cordially then. invited to you know Bruce Wayne's gonna ma-. so was they it hype the fuck was it Bruce too. Wayne marrying Selena Kyle or no, was it Batman marrying Catwoman? Has nobody seen Smokey and the Bandit one and two? Not since I was a kid. Like, people get left at the altar. Like, I've done it six times already. The, the leaving Legend has it, left. they're still waiting to this day. There's but just some baby, church in Vegas where the there's like a skeleton in a wedding dress. <laughs> there's a story there. What? There's a story that can be told. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, Tim Burton, that's a freebie. Make that movie. Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, just like, no, no, no. I'm just saying. Danny DeVito in a three-foot high top hat. <laughs> He's the, he's the I'm not. I'm not dissing him. I'm dissing Tim Burton. Anyway, big hype that they were going to get married. And they did not. And spoilers. They right. did not get married. So hey, a lot like, of retailers was, are upset because it was I, I didn't buy into it. Uh, but like, well, it, so when New companies York, do a major York, thing, they're New like, New York Post spoiled it. No, New York but Times. like three months ago, DC hits us up. Hey, we're, so Batman's getting married in, in Batman number fifty. Oh yeah. Do you want to do your own store exclusive variant? Here's a list of artists you could choose from to do a variant. And we've done some variants, and some have been really good for us, some not. And I was like, I don't think people, like, even if they did get married, I don't think people would really care enough to for us to order 3,000 copies, yeah, which that, is the that, minimum. That's the minimum. That's the minimum you have to order. 3,000 copies? Of a yeah, book, yeah. Are easy. you fucking serious? Yeah, that's a $5 book. Yeah. 3,000 copies. And so whenever we do a variant, we, we do minimum right? 3,000 copies. 3,000 copies? Yes. Yeah. Ballers. Uh, so we passed on it, but a lot of shops like Midtown and I don't know, Golden Apple or whoever, they're like, yeah, let's we want to we want our own like Jim Lee cover or whatever. Because I mean, cause and then DC was with, so they shit buy out. it, and then the thing that they said is going to happen in the book didn't happen. Well, not just that, but here's the thing: is that all the all, they all the stores bought it, yeah. and then New York Times or New York Post, I forget which, like a week, a couple days like, before the book comes yeah, out, they says, oh, they don't really get married. And said that they don't really get married. So well, they spoiled it in conjunction with DC Comics, who like 
said said to like it, it wasn't like you know it was they they got an advanced copy. No, DC actually leaked the fact that they don't get married. Why so the, the fuck night the book comes that? out, like these stores that ordered yeah, so a bunch copies. of people who were pissed off who 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 wanted to wow. get it to see what happens. Well, I know I don't need it now. I still, I mean, I still bought it the same way I would if they were getting married or not. To use as toilet paper? No, I, I, I think, <laughs> no. The Batman comic is really really good. Tom King's Batman it's run expensive. is one of the best things going yeah, on. There is there is one awesome. great scene in there where I believe. Um, it's you know it was it Alfred who says uh, to to Bruce Wayne you know do you want to get a hold of uh, you know Clark to have him come be your best man and he's like well why you know you you know you you've always been there for me you know you're my best man kind of thing and he's like saying that nonchalantly like reading like a magazine or something and looks over and Alfred just comes up and just hugs him it's a really cool it's really a good book I mean it's, it's well written but that aside fuck off you know. <laughs> well, and, and, and so you're right. The, the book, it's not the book's fault that DC made this hype machine thing about it. It's so. the book's right. fault that that's the fucking book got made. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, I mean. That's why I let it into Catwoman 1. Yeah, and that was good too. So. Anyway, uh, but I didn't order 3,000 copies, so I can sit here and say that. Do you have to order 3,000 copies of everything? That they if you want my own, if we want our own cover, yeah. Like if, sort of yeah, if we like Black Panther, we ordered three thousand. Guardians, we ordered three thousand. And those Spider Gwen, those probably sold. And nobody was pissed. Right? Just tape a piece of paper to the front and make your own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that would go over well. Boot, boot that, that'll edition. CGC really well. Yeah. The thing is, all right. So the trick is, like, you order three thousand, you pay the actual fifty percent of the two of the four dollar cover. You pay two dollars a copy. So three thousand times two is six thousand dollars. <laughs> but can you can you send them? Can you yes. send them? So back? then you sell as many as you no. can for twenty bucks, and hopefully you, you sell six thousand dollars worth. Wait, they were twenty dollars a copy? No, no, no. no. We no, sold no, ours no. for like twenty bucks. Like we're not gonna sell all three thousand, but we sell as many as we can for twenty, and then we just burn the rest. You literally burn them? That's how I heat my house in the winter, dude. It's true. I've seen it. So you can't I, even, you know, because because with with like like novel, like with books, the way right. publishers work, like having you know over having done overseen inventory at a major book chain years ago, the new fucking Tom Clancy comes out, you order however many hundreds of copies and whatever doesn't sell, so you, you send back and no. you get a percentage back. A lot of comics aren't returnable. No, comics aren't returnable. Dude, the way the direct market works. It's really works, easy. Just write return the syndrome. Right, do you guys want to get super geeky, or uh, we can get? Do you want <laughs> well, to? Let's let's hear it. All right. So what happened was in the 1970s, oh, there man, was the newsstand really market. So newsstands, as as they exist today, is like yeah, that they just provide you what they think will sell. Whatever doesn't sell, you rip the covers off. You send yeah, them back. Like a and, paperback. Yeah. So then comic shops open, and they're like, well, we will order, you know, from the comic publishers. But we want a bigger discount so we can sustain. And so the compromise was, we'll give you a bigger discount, but the books cannot be returnable. You can't, like, okay. order 300 mm -hmm. copies of something, sell 50 of them, and then send me 250 back. So we gave up the returnability aspect of, okay. of things. So And that was in the, in the late 70s. And so ever since then, to this very day, like, whatever we order, we order what we think we can sell. That's Well, that's good. Good. I mean, good on you for not swallowing the bullshit, dude. That's yeah. crazy. And every once in a while, like if, if a publisher believes in something that, taste the that we don't believe in, they'll be like, we'll make this book it. fully returnable. So You, you spit. You spit. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I learned something new. <sighs> Thank God. With a new Thank God you're walking away right from this show with something. Yeah. It's... Can I do... Uh, what? Do uh, you want to touch it and feel or something? No. I was going to talk about a comic. Oh, okay. I know that's revolutionary. But... Um, real quick. So, uh, <clears throat> Holly Interlandi and Sally Cantorino. It's probably way easier to pronounce those names, but I'm a little bit drunk. Um, <laughs> last song, number two, came out from Black Mass. That's a big book. Finally. So, they're doing this, <clears throat> like, it's every uh, quarter, but oh, it's wow. 60 pages, black and white. So good. It reminds me a little bit of Teenagers from Mars. Um, and we don't care. It's just such a good book. And it's just, it's, so, <clears throat> Holly Interlandi, the um, writer, talks about, and I think it must be in the first issue, how she originally wrote this as a novel 15 years ago, and now it's being, you know, turned into this comic, and it's black and white, it's gorgeous. And 
He talks about how, you know, rock and roll, when it gets into comics, it usually is like rock and roll. I mean, she points out rock and roll Jesus, or punk, punk rock, rock Jesus, Jesus. is mm-hmm. the best, and I agree. But, it is good. but she points out like usually it. rock and roll is in conjunction with something like Punk's rock. Not dead. Well, okay. That's a suspect. I have that here as well. Dude, oh, but it, it's, rock and roll is usually, uh, but it's an example of it. rock and roll is usually not enough. It's usually rock and roll, but like extra dimensional demon is writing the song well, or you, rock and roll. I mean, this, you kind of rock... have to because you know audio doesn't translate. This out of book pages. doesn't do that. It's just about this band that like forms in the in the early eighties and the they kind of come of age. Scott Pilgrim. That's true. That's true. Uh, I love Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. yeah, it's a gorgeous book. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's wonderful, and the, the second issue is better than the first, and I just, I really, really like it. I had been waiting for it. Um, when you had uh, a panel here for She Draws Comics, and oh, yeah. you played the documentary, Holly and Sally were here oh, on the panel, yeah, wow. and they talked about this book, and so I was like waiting four for four years it. ago. I was waiting for it for oh, years, and it finally came signing. out, and <laughs> you should. It's, you should have reminded me. It's really, really good. I really like the book. <laughs> The new uh, Mark Millar book, Magic Order. Let's hear it. Mm-hmm. I fucking <laughs> loved it. To be honest with you, this I got. I mean, first of all, like this, the the cover alone kind of kind of set me. You know, I like that weird kind of magic bullshit. You know, <laughs> that's actually. Did you see the pitch they did? It was like weird kind of weird kind of magic bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, sold just, that, yeah. That, that to Netflix. <laughs> yeah, fun fact: this is yeah. actually oh, yes, the first yes. comic um, that Netflix has put out oh, uh, under, the under the image uh, moniker. Look on in the back fact, cover. If you look actually inside, what's that? Look on the back cover. Wait, are they, oh no, I know. They're, wait, they're, the series is coming out at the same at the same time as the book. Yeah, you know, well, what like they're that? doing? No, 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 no. Yet. it's oh, not yet. But this coming is soon. coming out on Netflix as their first, um, basically, motion comic series. Oh, so That's there's not gonna be a live action show? No, 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 it's no, no. Okay. It's, it's motion comics are the worst, by the way. But anyway, no, go ahead. not necessarily. Basically, I mean, there's it, so it's it like plays your, it plays like out like, like, like a ra- book it plays and out you're like, not touching more it more like a radio <laughs> radio <laughs> more, <laughs> more like a radio drama. You know, it has sound effects and a score behind it, but there's no dialogue. It still so has it, all it, the bubbles. It was it's out there now. No, it's not 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 yet. I mean, it straight says you know copyright you know Netflix. Studios on the inside and all that. Well, he's got to deal with them. All his books are like Netflix co-productions. Uh, I want to say it was like eight or nine books. Not all of them, but like mm. he, he did. I mean, he did a huge deal with it. So, Magic Order's the new Mark Millar book. Uh, it basically tells <clears throat> the story of um, of a family. I don't. Did it, did it even describe say what they actually are magicians? I mean, what yeah, do you? I, I don't. Well, we were drinking when I... You brought, yeah, that, we were. You brought that goddamn <laughs> giant can of 9.5% alcohol beer, so... Oh, is that it's when y'all a, had your pre, pre-game? Yeah. yeah, you missed it. It is an awesome book. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It, it's it's very blatantly Mark Millar. It's it's very blatantly Mark Millar. But, I mean, but it's actually... It's good Mark Millar, which is nice. It seems yeah. to be like like return to form in a, in a lot of ways. Well, I think his form is making money, so I don't know that. I mean, no, I mean, I mean he he has his highs and he has his yeah, lows, and I think this is definitely a high, you know, over the last couple so, of I years mean, here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you said so. We did our pre thing the other night, and you yeah, tell me what I said. You I said remember. you read four pages, and you're like, "Well, I'm sold." Yeah, yeah, that's true. And yeah, then, first four pages in, I was, I was, yeah, I was sold on it. I remember thinking, he never read another page. I remember thinking, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. I thought, good enough, good enough. You know, I was curious enough because, like, Mike had actually put this in my pull, and I had, I had like, eh, I'll, I'll pass. Um, I like a lot. I like some of Millar's stuff. I don't like other stuff. But this book, I when he when Chris passed it to me, I hit page four. I was like, I'm sold. Yeah. Spe- and he never read another hey, page. Speaking <laughs> of which, speaking of which, uh, add this to my pull later. I don't. You can't tell me to do shit when I'm drunk, guys. I, no, that's the best this time. Is, this to. is why shit doesn't. Like I, th- I told you to add this to my pool. Like, well, yeah, after like four beers, I'll, f- I'll follow you over there. I'll, I'll make sure it happens. Tell Joe. Thank you. Know. you. <laughs> why didn't I get number two? Like, I don't know, because he told me after the episode of drinking. With no, Thomas. that's fucking rubbish, dude. I saw no. I, I saw my shit written down after number one. It was in the book. It was in okay, the book. All right. Okay. I'm just telling you how so, to handle me. Good book. Check it out. Uh, Magic Order. It's gonna be on Netflix. Good. Check out the book too. Do do, do like a so we're, we're where are we at? We're gonna, we will stop soon. So yeah, we do, gotta stop soon. Go through Imaginary Friends and her fiends. Infernal Dis- fiends. Can we? Sorry. Imaginary <laughs> fiends. 
There's two more I wanted to talk about. Oh, um, okay. One is Imaginary Fiends um, from Vertigo. And this just has a great premise, I, I think. Uh, basically, when kids have uh, imaginary friends, you know, their little buddies that, you know, you come play with them and all that kind of shit. There's basically the exact opposite of that as well, which are the imaginary fiends. That are basically these monsters uh, who attach themselves onto these kids. And the only way that they exist is they thrive off of their attention. And they can get very um, jealous and very violent and lash out when they don't get it. So this story tells the um, it, it tells about this girl where her imaginary fiend, um, basically when she was a little kid, ended up uh, killing. Was it? An, was well, it, was it, it had her. So the the main the main character. Um, I'm blanking on her name. I read this a few months ago. She, so. she <laughs> basically killed her best friend. She stabbed her to death. Killed her best friend. Yeah. And it was be and her defense, you know, it it sets this up where it's like she kills a she kills her best friend and then like the, the brother finds a body or whatever and then her defense was well my imaginary friend made me do it mm -hmm. and so then years later this girl that killed her friend is in an insane asylum and an FBI agent shows up and says I'm I need you to be on my team because like this is a thing and I know you can see them like mm -hmm. we believe you I can't tell the world that you're innocent. Yeah. But if you come and work for us, because I know you can see these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, so the whole premise is that, you know, yeah, this, this girl is now working for the FBI. Um, and she calls back uh, now, you know, as an adult, her imaginary fiend and just basically says, look, here's the deal. I'm going to give you the attention that you need in, order, you in order to survive. But you got to play by my rules yeah. this time. You have to survive. You have to do what I say. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to cut you off again. And, uh, yeah, and then they basically go off and work for the FBI to take down other imaginary fiends. And it becomes kind of like an X-Files thing where it's like the seasoned, you know, FBI agent and then this girl that's only an agent because she can see them mm -hmm. and then her imaginary fiend, right? And the, a the, a the senior agent can't see the fiend, but he knows that Which, it's there. You know, there's a good Polly picture. Peach Pit. But there's a great kind of moment idea. in the second issue where the girl who, who has this imaginary fiend, so now she's an FBI agent, they go to this town in Ohio where this kid disappeared, and they know that it's the work of a fiend. And so the senior agent's staying in his room, and she goes, she's been in the insane asylum since she was a little kid, so mm -hmm. she goes to this pub, and she starts drinking whiskey. And what she finds is, because everywhere she goes, the imaginary fiend is there, so nobody else can see it, but it's constantly there, and it's like, I know that you fear me, and blah, blah, and it's always talking in her ear, and as she's mm -hmm. drinking the whiskey, she's like, oh, God, I don't really like this, but I I can't fucking hear her anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and you see they do it visually really cool where her word, the imaginary fiend's word bubbles start to yeah. get... Yeah. Like obscured until mm -hmm. there's just like the black word bubble with no words in it, and yeah. and you can see on the creature's face like, wh why are you not? Why can't you hear me? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> and so she's finally like become, <laughs> and, and they tie um, this into uh, there's actually a really good, there's another character that offers a really good idea of why people drink and do drugs, and it's the the idea that you are this person and you've done things that maybe you you're not too happy with. Everybody has. Yeah, I thought it was because they're fucking awesome. Well, but, yeah, could yeah, be I, that I, too. I guess, but you know, she goes and she's like, when you drink or do drugs, you be, you can become this other person with this other story, and you're not necessarily beholden to what you've done. It was I thought it was really eloquently the writing. It's um, uh, oh, Tim Seeley. Which yeah. what else has he Hack done? Slash. He. Yep. I thought so, yeah. and it's such a surprise for me because I really want to like Half Slash, but it's Hack a good Slash? concept. I, my friend but Adrian produces it, fucking, is doing the movie. It's a TNA. Adrian. It's a TNA Sorry, book. No, it's executed like a TNA book, but <laughs> it's, it's a great idea. I mean, no, the TNA book is Hack Slash versus Vampirella. I don't know. No, but I, I, it's, it's always been a friend a TNA of mine book. had the Omnibus years ago, and I borrowed. I got halfway through it. The like, idea is great. It's pronounced, the idea is it's pronounced Omnibus, right? Okay. So. The idea is fantastic, but. The, the book, it's just like, oh, okay, well, okay. She's wearing a skirt where you can actually see her fucking panties. Like, the skirt's so short that her panties are sticking down like a beak, you know? Well, it's, it's good to see she's wearing like At least she's beak. wearing panties, dude. 
No, I mean, it's, you it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> well, I only read like it's five not, fucking issues, so it's maybe not at Frank some point. Joe, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not it. But, but you know, I'm sorry, Tim Seeley. But the concept's obviously. still good. The concept. And by the way, Tim fantastic. does. Oh, maybe he does draw it's it. Fantastic. Maybe he did draw but it. He also does. Um, what's the the uh, revival, right? Yeah, he's a good Which, writer. Yeah, he's a great writer. So you, I love you hooked revival. up with a pervert that draws hack slash. The, the, I love Revival. I thought that was a... Can't blame him for that. The guy That's got the book done. Though. Okay, so do her in front of her... Uh, Actually, I'm going to let you do this one because I know I just... I let you touch up on it. There's another book from Aftershock. Another, which I just want a quick shout out to Garth Ennis's, uh A Walk Through Hell. Uh, one yes. and two are out. One was all set up. Two is fucking fantastic. So, Her uh, Infernal yeah. Descent, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know anything about this. Chris brought it over the other night, and uh, this was this, right was, away, this was one that I read, and I'm like, I'm, I'm reading it, I'm like, fucking Sean's going to love this shit. It's, so, it's this o- older woman, and she's, I, I don't really know what the deal is. She's, like, referencing her family. I think she's her senile. Fam- she, she's, she's the last one of her family and who's alive. So, William Blake shows up, and mm. it, it basically, yeah, yeah, and okay. is basically walking her into... The afterlife to meet her family, and it not, first, not just the afterlife, but basically the, the seven yeah. rings of hell. The seven, yes, um, you know, from Dante's Inferno, mm-hmm. and that's what it's supposed it, to be about. It's so fucking like it reminds me so much of Alan Moore's uh, Promethea, where there's like a whole ten issues where they walk you through the major arcana at the tarot, and it's it, it just ha- it so has that feeling. But it's it's not just that. But really cool. But the thing that blew me away about this book at some point, so she she runs into you know Edgar Allan Poe and and um, Homer and all this, and then David fucking Foster Wallace and anybody that puts David Foster Wallace in the same company as you know Ovid and I mean it it made me so happy because he's one of my favorite writers and it, it just it was so cool to see him right there with the fucking trademark bandana mm-hmm. you know and like. Uh, next, you know, the next page over from Shakespeare. So it was really, really, really you cool. Get Hendrix and Hendrix too. is, you know, and I mean that's another thing. I love the idea of music as literature because I've always been a proponent of that. Sure. So it's poetry to, to fucking music. And it, like, I need to get this book, you know. So I <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I mean also, it's, it's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, really what I really like about it is, is it's basically yeah, it's 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 a tour through hell. What it reminds me of is the um, the film, um, the Robin Williams. Oh, I've never seen it. That, um, it's based on Richard Matheson. What, what, what dreams uh, may come. Yeah, it's it reminds me a lot of that, but just you know, being led, this woman being led through through the afterlife with just these literary giants. <laughs> on that note, if you're in the Philippines. And you write for uh, Manila Times? Yes, I write a <clears throat> monthly pop culture column. So you you should read that. And you could probably read it online if you don't live in yes. the Philippines. So I'll start doing that. And Thank uh, you. number six, Guns and Blazing coming out. Thirsty yep. Crow's got a new record coming out. We do have Jordan's a new record got a painting coming out. At the Pasadena um, Museum of Modern Art. Okay, so <laughs> from those of us that drink it with comics, thank you and good night. Ow! Jordan!